Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about how I charge this uh, lithium battery pack that I made in a previous series of videos. Uh, the main reason why I'm doing a video on this is because I've been asked uh, how I balance charge these things quite a bit. Now, uh, I've also been asked about uh, charging one of these things off of solar, and I'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, but uh, anyhow, first off you'll need a lithium polymer, that's probably what you're going to look for. Uh, lipo balance charger now I'm into uh, the RC trucks as well so I have this one this is an Onyx 245 it's probably a little bit of uh, expensive and the reason why it's expensive is because this is actually a uh, dual output charger and uh, for most people if you're just gonna build something like this there's no point in having a dual output charger uh, so some of the more popular ones are like that little Tur Turnigy charger. I think that runs about forty dollars, and the uh, IMAX B6 also. Uh, now this particular battery pack that I have here is 17.6 amp hours. Now if you have a 17.6 amp hour battery pack, the optimum charge current is 17.6 amps. Uh, so whatever the capacity is that will be uh, the optimum charging current and that is known as the C rate. Uh, the C rate is the capacity. Usually one C is charging so the capacity or the C being 17.6 in this case, I think 17.6, something like that. Uh, that's being the capacity so one of the uh, capacity would be 17.6 amps. If you had a 5,000 milliamp hour battery you would charge it at 5,000 milliamps and 5,000 milliamps is the same as 5 amps because uh, with milliamps that's thousands of an amp you divide that by a thousand you get amps so and most of these chargers are going to work off of amps uh, anyway this is a particular setup that I use uh, you notice I don't have native XT60 connectors for this charger that plug into the banana jacks and I also don't have uh, any of these banana plugs laying around so I went ahead and I just made uh, a Traxxas connector to XT60 connector adapter uh, I think most of the uh, like IMAX V6 chargers and the little Turnigy chargers actually include XT60 connectors on them uh, the other thing that could have been done is I could have used like Dean's connectors on uh, these plugs here. And the other thing uh, is this little uh, battery balance board here. This was included with the charger. Uh, this one, the way it works is there's a little port on the side here that you can plug uh, this little extension cable into and then you plug in your uh, battery balance lead into this board. Uh, some of the chargers will just have all the connectors on the side over here and then you just plug the uh, balance lead into the charger. And that works out fairly well as well. Uh, but with this one, uh, I have to have this extension lead here in order to actually plug that in. But uh, first I'll go ahead and hook up the charger to uh, wall power. And uh, one note about those other chargers I mentioned earlier. Those things require a 12 volt power supply. So if you have like an old computer power supply or you can go and buy uh, a specific 12 volt power supply that's meant for the charger. Uh, the nice, one of the nicer things about the Onyx here is you can plug it straight into the, your uh, 120 volt wall outlet. Uh, or, this actually has alligator clips on it here, you can hook it up across a uh, car battery if you're out on the go and want to hook it up to something besides uh, the 120 volts. But uh, anyway, just so you know, if you get the IMAX B6 or the Eternity, you will need a 12 volt power supply of some kind. I think they need to be able to supply like uh, maybe 6 amps or so, 6 maybe 10 amps to be safe. I'd go with a 10 amp power supply, which. Like I said, if you have an old computer power supply laying around, you can uh, modify one of those things to uh, give you 12 volts out of them and actually quite a bit of current. So uh, Anyway, first we'll go ahead and connect this adapter cable, which uh, goes from the Traxxas connector to the XT60. And I'm going to plug this into the, uh, the port on this that's labeled main. And that main port 
is actually connected straight across the battery with no circuitry in it, not even a fuse. Uh, it's just hooked straight up to it. And that's the port that I always plug in the power inverter to, which I usually have a power inverter velcroed on the top of this thing. Um, so either I plug in that power inverter there or I plug this in to charge it. And you don't want any kind of uh, circuitry in the way of the charger here. So that's the reason why I don't use the switch side because that one actually turns on with uh, the switch over here and that actually has a MOSFET in it. Uh, which will shut off if the uh, voltage gets too low. But, anyway, the, uh, you want your connection straight across the battery. Now, with uh, lithium ion batteries, you also have to add in a balance connector, which uh, I've just got an extension lead here. And that will plug straight in like this. See, or something like that. I think it was in this way. Maybe not. It plugs in like that. Now over here on the charger, we need to actually set this up so it's uh, set for charging a lithium polymer battery. Now I realize this particular battery pack is uh, lithium ion, but uh, modern lithium ion batteries are actually the exact same. Uh, voltage ranges of lithium polymer so that goes from 3 volts up to 4.2 now for whatever reason the lithium ion setting on this battery charger will let me uh, it only goes from like well I think it goes from 3 up to like 4 it doesn't go all the way up to 4.2 so it doesn't actually completely charge the battery uh, so I set this to lipo and underneath settings here, this charger has a few different charge currents. There's 5 amps, uh, 0.8 amps, 1.5 amp, and 3 amps. Uh, so like I said earlier, the optimum charge current would be like 17.6. Uh, I can't do 17.6 amps with this charger. You can't really do 17.6 amps with a lot of other chargers. Uh, so anyway. I'll go ahead and go here with this charger I can hit data and we can see the individual cell voltages here so we have 4.04 volts on one of the banks of cells 4.03 on another one and 4.03 on the last one now uh, I actually didn't expect that to be this good these uh, apparently the batteries that I ripped out of those like nine dollar fifty cent laptop batteries that I built this out of are actually a lot better than I thought they were uh, because usually they won't stay balanced that well during uh, discharge so and I was just using this a little bit you see it's still at like 12 volts the uh, the absolute minimum for a 3s uh, lithium ion pack like this would be 3 volts uh, the, or not 3 volts it would be 3 volts per cell but it would be 9 volts for the entire pack so usually I don't run these things down that far but anyway uh, now that everything checked out there all the cells are good I'll go ahead and start the charge on that and I'll talk a little bit more about why this is important and you'll see this will come up here and the current will come up now I think there's wattage limits on these channels because it will only let me get up to like three and a half amps or something like that uh, maybe 3.13 amps 3.15 something like that as it's charging uh, I'm not entirely sure because it will do 5 amps on lower voltage packs, so I'm pretty sure it's like a wattage limit on the channel. But uh, Anyway, the reason why lithium ion battery charging is so important and why, why this needs to be done as a safety thing is because if your lithium cells go out of balance, uh, and when you're charging them, they're going to go over the uh, or the maximum 4.2 volts that you're supposed to run them at. Uh, and when that happens, is you start going over maybe about 4.3, 4.35 on uh, traditional lithium-ion cells, they will start to get really hot. And eventually, if you keep going over the voltage that they're supposed to be at they will uh, release a whole bunch of smoke, possibly fire. I mean, just go on YouTube and look up LiPo battery fire. Uh, you should be able to find plenty of uh, examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, sometimes people will hit the things with nails and they'll do the same thing, but uh, 
it's not exactly a good idea to uh, not balance charge a lithium battery. Uh, I don't think this charger will even let me charge a lithium battery unless it's uh, hooked up with a balance lead. Uh, I think like the IMAX B6 and that little turnergy thing will actually let you do it. But uh, anyway, and if you want to know more about those chargers, they're pretty popular. So you can just look up like IMAX B6 review on YouTube and you should be able to figure out exactly how to use that charger, exactly how it works. Uh, but I'm just showing you how I hook up this particular battery pack uh, for my uses. Now to address uh, the question about solar, how, how you, you can charge something like this off of solar, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can go get a BMS or battery management system. Uh, you just look up like uh, lithium ion BMS on eBay or Amazon or whatever. And usually you can find uh, lithium ion battery chargers that are meant to work off of uh, just normal 12 volt solar panels. Now in reality, a 12 volt solar panel will actually get up to about 20 volts or something like that. So you have plenty of uh, headroom to charge something like this off of a battery like that. And those things are capable of doing uh, balance charging as well. They do the same thing like what uh, this charger does. And one of the nice things about those systems is you can, well, some of them at least, you can embed them into the battery pack and they will also function as a shut off for uh, low voltage. Now, if you watch that uh, like six part series, I suppose this kind of makes the seventh part actually. Um, but if you watch that like, six part series or whatever it was, uh, you saw me build a protection circuit myself for this thing and uh, that's what these two uh, lights over here are for and the switched outlet is uh, actually on that protection circuit just so I don't run the batteries down too well but some of those BMS's will actually incorporate a, uh, a protection circuit into it so that ends up uh, saving a little bit of cost and with that kind of a board, you should be able to just put it into the uh, battery pack itself and then have a connector to plug your solar panel into it so you don't have to have a separate charger like this. It's just all in one unit. Um, and you could also get like a 14-ish a volt power supply in order to charge your battery as well uh, off of that same BMS if you can't get access to a solar panel. So uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and try to li link in the description to uh, the Turnergy charger, the IMAX B6, and uh, I'll try to find some kind of a battery management system for you guys. And uh, they won't be like affiliate links or anything like that, and they probably aren't going to be the best prices. I'm just going to find some examples of uh, some of the charges you can get. Uh, but like I said, the uh, best way to do this, since I don't have all the equipment in the world, uh, turns out YouTube and Google they have quite a few uh, pieces of equipment so if you're interested in charging off a solar panel look up uh, lithium ion BMS or lithium ion battery management system in YouTube and you should be able to find some pretty interesting uh, videos on how those things work uh, you should also be able to get videos on like the Turnergy charger and the IMAX B6 um, I'm pretty sure that the IMAX B6 and the Eternity Charger are basically the same thing with a slightly different case. Or one's a knockoff. Well, I think the IMAX B6 is like a knockoff of the Eternity one, but uh, uh, anyhow. Uh, also, some of those battery management systems will have like LCD screens on them too, and you can get the battery voltage and current and all kinds of stuff off off of that but those things end up getting kind of expensive uh, the cheaper ones will just be like a balancing slash charging board and those will uh, I'm not sure how much that actually cost I actually haven't done any research on those but uh, they can't be too much all right so one final note is uh, not so much of an important one but I uh, just kind of want to explain how uh, this charging actually works here 
Uh, so this is referred to, or lithium ion battery charging in general is usually referred to as constant current, constant voltage charging. And what that means is right now we're sitting at a constant current. Uh, it's right around three amps, a little bit higher than three amps there as you can see. And uh, from the time that I started this uh, charging process, it was at three amps. So uh, we're basically just sitting there right now. And once this hits 12.6 volts, which will be the maximum for this particular pack, you might hit like uh, 8.4 volts on a 2S pack or even 3.7, or uh, sorry, 4.2 volts on a single cell. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to start dropping the current and this voltage will stay right at 12.6 volts and the current will drop down to a tenth of the original charge current. So if you remember, we set this to charge at about five amps. And so that means when it drops down to about half of an amp, the charge is going to consider this battery to be fully charged and it's gonna set off this little alarm saying that it's done and it's going to quit charging this thing. Uh, anyway, so right now we're still in that constant current mode. It's gonna take a little while to actually get up to uh, the constant voltage mode, but uh, that's just a little bit of information on how that works. Uh, just so you know, this pack that I have here is actually a 3S 8P configuration, which means I have three sets of eight batteries set in series. So there's eight batteries in parallel, which will be those little individual 18650s. And then the uh, those eight sets are wired in series in order to give me the 12-ish volts, at 12.6 volts at its highest anyway. Uh, but anyway, that's about all you really need to know about lithium battery charging. Like I said, I'll try to link into the description uh, a few things about, or a few different charges that you can use, maybe a few videos explaining how to use some of those chargers, but uh, I just wanted to show you how I charge this big battery here, uh, how I do it personally. Anyway, so... Well, that's about it for now, guys. Bye.